I want to just show you a little tip for when you're scanning supraspinatus. So if we put the patient into a shoulder extended position, avoiding abduction, I'm just going to show you how important it is, particularly in the long section, to use your heel and toe. So if we look here, we've got the greater tuberosity. Now you can see supraspinatus here. Now we all know that we get this dark hypoechoic region here. And this is the anterior aspect of supraspinatus. And this is the articular surface. This is a very common area for a tear. So you must heal down the probe to see whether or not that is a anisotropy or whether it's a tear or tendinopathy. Because as soon as I really push, push down the heel of the probe, you can see those last fibers going into the greater tuberosity. I'm sacrificing this side of the image. I don't worry about that because I just want to know about these fibers. So the tip is if you see any dark patches, so as we scan through, there's a nice dark patch make sure you heal down and therefore you can tell that that's a nisotropy because you've now got the probe parallel to the fibers the beam perpendicular and you can see that that was a nisotropy and you can see the fibers going into the greater tuberosity so make sure you're using your heel and your toe i'll give you one more example remember subscapularis is one of the most it is the most missed rotator cuff tear on ultrasound. So if we just put the patient into lateral rotation, you can see subscapularis musculotendinous junction. Now, same thing happens. Remember the change of direction before those fibers attach into the lesser tuberosity. So again, we must heal down the probe and then we can see those fibers nicely filling in, which again means it's a nisotropy and it's not a tear. So when you're scanning something round, you must do lots of heel and toe to ensure the beam is perpendicular. Good luck. Now, I'm going to show you a pitfall. This can happen in any rotator cuff, but normally it happens in supraspinatus, particularly when you really stretch out the tendon. So, what we do, first of all, is you find the biceps. We always go to our biceps, that's our friend. Now, we're going to come round laterally, so we're going to look at supraspinatus. So we're going to see the greater tuberosity falling away. Now, as we go into the proximal aspect of the tendon, can you see this dark hypoechoic region there? Now, some people show me images thinking that this might be a tear. And you can also see a darker patch here. But this is the musculotendinous junction in this case of supraspinatus. So I'm just going to show you that once more. So because we've got the elbow in full, the shoulder, sorry, in full extension, as we come up and over, we keep going. This all looks like really good tendon. But as we come up higher, can you see there's this dark patch here? And this is the musculotendinous junction, not to be mistaken in this case for a bursal sided tear. You can see exactly the same on this lateral aspect as well. Now, if we put that in the middle and we spin on it really carefully, then you can quite clearly see that this is the musculotendinous junction of supraspinatus. So this is the tendon here, and then this is the musculotendinous region. So don't mistake those hypoechoic regions in that proximal tendon for a bursal sided tear. We all know finding rotator cuff tears can be difficult. Here's a couple of tips for when you're looking at supraspinatus. So this is a transverse image of supraspinatus. We know that because we've got the long head of biceps here. So this is the anterior aspect of supra. And then you can see infra coming up here. Now, this is a true transverse image. How do I know that? Well, number one, I've got a nice transverse Im image of the biceps. Number two, the bone is bright. Number three, I've got a nice parallel band of articular cartilage and I've got a nice parallel rotator cuff relative to the humeral head. So this is a true transverse. But watch this. As soon as I rotate and I no longer have a true transverse, and you can tell that because I've lost that nice articular cartilage parallel band, I start to see dark patches. And that's because I'm oblique and that is a nisotropy. So it is so important if you're scanning transverse that you are truly transverse. Otherwise, you're going to pick up dark patches that you think is either tendinopathy or an articular sided tear.
okay? So you can see when we're oblique on it, this is no longer a parallel band and you can't see the parallel band of the articular cartilage. So there's a tip in transverse. In long, here's a couple of tips for you. So this is supraspinatus in long. This is the great tuberosity. If I push my probe forward, can you see I am now long on the long head of biceps, which means when I come laterally, I'm going to be truly long on supraspinatus. But also, can you see I can see the fibers in long? So if you say you're long on a normal tendon, you should see nice long fibers attaching in. However, watch this. If I'm not truly long and I rotate, look at these dark patches that you start to see. Oh, is that an articular sided tear? It's not. It's because you're oblique on the tendon. So make sure if you say you're long, you're long. Make sure you've got the bone bright. You can see that parallel band of cartilage. And as you push forward, you're on a nice long section of biceps. Did you find that video useful? If you did, don't worry, we've got loads more videos for you. You can like our videos, you can make a comment, you can subscribe to our channel to get all of our new videos, and you can even join our membership. Good luck scanning.